knitters. It's Christina here with Classic Cable Knits, a Knitter's Life um, podcast, and um, it's April 15th. I thought I was going to report that it is spring now, but um, it decided to snow this morning. <laughs> April 15th, and it's snowing. Um, I wouldn't say that's a new one for Indiana. Um, we have had snow this late, but it's unusual, so it's slightly disappointing. Little John this morning as he was going off to school, um, I, I was lamenting the fact that it was snowing and there was snow on the ground and that the daffodils had snow on them. And he said, but Mama, don't worry, spring is coming. So we won't worry, spring is coming. But anyways, last week um, John had spring break and I thought it would be fun to do some special projects with him. Um, one of the things about raising creative children is doing what you love um, with them, doing the creative things that you love um, with them. So um, I thought that I would do that. I love to um, dye yarn and spin, and I thought that he would enjoy the process of dyeing some roving. I wasn't too sure how it would go and if it would be extremely messy, but I decided to give it a try. It was spring break and we had the time. So um, I got some, some plain roving and I usually dye with acid dyes, like the um, Jacquard acid dyes, but I didn't want to dye um, roving with a child using acid dyes. They just can be, you have to be very careful about acid dyes. You don't want to breathe in the powders, and um, if the liquid gets anywhere, you want to mop it up before it dries to a powder again, because the powders can be dangerous to inhale. So I didn't really want to do that with a, uh, a child. Um, I thought I'd be a nervous wreck doing it. Um, maybe some of you have done it and have done it successfully, but I thought it would be safer for me and more relaxing for me if I um, used some Wilson food uh, dyes. So I went to Michael's and I was in the aisle. <laughs> I was in the aisle looking at the, the dyes and this um, Michael's employee comes up to me, she was an older woman, and she says, have you taken one of our cake classes? And I said, um, well, no, but I have heard of them. Thank you for letting me know. And um, it was clear that she wanted to chat some more. She's like, well, you really should. And if you've hung around my sisters and I any, you know that our cakes, the cakes that we like to make, are very natural looking. Um, we usually don't use cake dyes to dye the icing, and we don't do a lot of icing. We don't do a lot of flourishes on the icing. We tend to do like Victoria sandwich cakes decorated by real flowers or real fruit or sugar glazed fruit or something like that. So in my mind, I was thinking, no way. <laughs> that is not my kind of cake. I don't want to take a cake decorating lesson. Um, but I didn't want to offend her. And I don't want to offend any of you if you love to decorate cakes and lots of icing, and that's just fine. That's great. We need those. Um, but we just, I just prefer cakes that are maybe a little more simply decorated. Not a bad thing, not a good thing, just the way it is. So, um, I could tell I wasn't really in the mood to chat, which I felt kind of bad about. But, um, I said, well, I'm not going to be using these to decorate a cake, actually, or cookies, I am going to be using these to dye um, yarn or to dye roving. And she, and she said, what's that? And I said, well, I really like to spin, and you can take um, sheep fiber, and you can dye it, and you can make it colorful before you spin it. And so I was trying, I'm trying to pick out some colors. I think I'm going to do this with my four-year-old son, and I'm trying to pick out some colors that he would like, and... Um, we're going to do this one spring break. And she kind of looked at me like, whoa, this is way out there. Um, and she talked with me about some colors and then she, she left. Um, but before I was, 
out of the store. I was in line to pay. And the lady calls across the, the, the lanes where I was standing in to check out. She goes, um, I hope you have a good time dying. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. And the manager of the store looked at her like, what? And she said, well, she's going to go dye some, some, some yarn. And, um, he, she was, and she explained to him, but I just nearly died. <laughs> Bye. I hope you have a good time dying. I and mean, really, that's just, that was too funny. Anyways, so we had a ton of fun dyeing the fiber. And I have a quick video to show that I think you'd like to see. So here it is. Hi, John. Hi. I'm painting yarn. This is exciting. Are you enjoying it? Of course I am. Oh, good. That's a good thing. So tell me, what colors are you painting? Well, I'm painting blue right now. Okay. This is purple, stunning purple right now. Okay. This is green, this is yellow, this is orange, and this is green. What do you think is the best color so far? Uh, I like all the colors. That's good. That's good. That's really good. The yellow is really light, isn't it? It's kind yeah. of a lemony yellow. Yeah, it is. Do you think we should add any more, or do you think it's okay? Well, we need to get the whole yarn covered, so, and now I'm going to do some orange. Okay. And they're very strong colors. Are they? They look very strong, very bright. Mm hmm And now I'm painting Orange. Orange. What are you doing? Well, I'm watching you. This is exciting. This is a lot of fun. It is. Are you on spring break? Of course I am on school. Yes. Isn't that exciting to have a break from school so we can do fun things? It is. And now I'm going to do some blue. Okay. Well, I'm going to do some yellow. Yellow. I think it could use a little more yellow. I think that's good. So what are we going to do after we... We paint it. Are we going to pop it in the oven or the microwave? I think the microwave. Yes, that's right. And we're going to cook it for two minutes at a time until the water runs clear and there's no dye left. Why? Well, it has to look pretty when it comes out. Exactly. I'm sure it will. And we have to leave the dye. Yes. In. Yep. And it won't have any more dye after we take it out. So the water won't have any dye, but all the wool will have all the dye. Isn't that exciting? Yes, and now I'm going to switch to blue. Okay, well, thanks for talking to me today um, about your dyeing process. We'll check in with you at the end, okay? Okay. Okay. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> he really enjoyed it, and he did such a good job. Um, I was laughing at the end because... My fingers, I didn't, I didn't do any of the dyeing, I, n none of it. John did it all. And at the end, my fingers were all dyed and colored, and his were perfectly clean. He didn't get any dye on his clothes, on the counter, on his fingers. He was extremely careful, whereas his mala had it all over her hands. So I was real that. That, I thought, was hysterical. And, you know, it's not for every four-year-old child. I'm sure um, that some four-year-old children wouldn't be um, into it. But John really got into it, so I thought that was fun. So here is the fiber that we dyed. Isn't it beautiful? He, you can tell he really likes the color green. Um because he really used, he used a lot of the green, so, um, and here's another one. The purple-violet color separated, and food dyes will tend to do that, so you can see there's, um, there's a bit of red, pinkish, it was a violet color, and as long as, you know, you go into this understanding that this is not going to be a perfect dye. It's, it's, um, this will fade um, through the years. Um, it shouldn't bleed if you've dyed it properly, but, um, you know, it's not, if you want something perfectly dyed, 
diet from buy it from a, you know one of the indie dyers because they they do such a great job. They use professional acid dyes and they set it really well. So um, this is just this is just for fun. Just a fun project, you know. Um, I'm probably going to spin this up and maybe spin it into some mitts for him. Knit some mitts for him. Um, and here's the last ball. I um, tore this down and got it ready for spinning. So I my birthday is at the end of the week, so I told John that he should wrap this up for my birthday and give it to me for my birthday. So he's really excited about doing that. So I'll leave some instructions on how to dye with um, Wilton cake dyes and how we dyed it in the microwave um, in the show notes on the blog. And you can find the blog at a anitterslife.blogspot.com. So, and you can also jump over to the Ravelry group, Classic Cable Knits, um, and ask me any questions you have about dyeing with Wilton Cake dyes. Um, so go ahead and uh, hop over there and join the group, and you can um, join the chitter chatter about um, about dyeing and um, whatever else you want to talk about. Um, so that was my fun summer summer break project with with John, and it was a lot of fun. I think we'll probably do it again this summer. So, um, anyways. Um, so, finished objects. What have I been up to knitting? Well, I've been working on socks. I am determined. This past winter was really cold. Really cold. And I usually only knit socks for my mom. It's crazy, isn't that? <clears throat> but I love my mom, and she loves warm, she loves warm feet and warm socks. So she and she's the one who taught me how to knit. So um, I knit socks for my mom. But I need to knit socks for myself too. And she told me that too. So I need to do it. Um, so I am determined this year to knit socks at least maybe um, one pair a month. We'll see <laughs> if I can do that. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I'd like to, I'd like to do, um, more of it. Anyways, so I finished these socks, and I think they were on the needles at the last podcast, and I used a garter stitch heel. It's, you wrap and turn, and, um, it's a garter stitch heel, and because it's garter stitch, you do not have to pick up the wraps, um, after you turn it, and I love that. It's a nice, easy... Um, heel. It goes really fast and it's really sturdy. It's a really sturdy short row heel. So I, this is my favorite go-to vanilla sock he, um, heel. And I love just plain vanilla socks. I, I don't know. I know that there many of you just love making pattern socks and that's just fine. But um, sock knitting is my comfort knitting and I just really like to knit a plain sock. So but I did think that I should experiment and learn um, a new, some new heel techniques. Why not? You know, you can always throw um, whatever heel you're in the mood for. And so I tried Cat Bordy's Sweet Tomato Heel. It is made out of three wedges, three short row wedges that are worked on two thirds of the stitches. And then after each wedge, you work the wedge into the body of the sock. It's absolutely amazing. It is. It fits your heel so nicely. It really hugs it and hugs the, the inside curve of your heel. I just love it. Um, again, Cat Bordy is, is just a magician when it comes to knitting. And I loved how it turned out in this. Um, the self-striping um, Patton's Croy um, sock yarn. This is the rag stripes, I think blue rag stripes. And, you know, if, you've, if you're a um, podcast watcher, you've probably seen this, this yarn. Um, it's really popular right now. And you can just get it at Michael's, which is awesome. Um, one of my favorite things to do on Wednesdays, my mom watches the two boys while I go food shopping so that I haven't needed to bring them out in the cold this winter. And also so that I can go food shopping um, 
by myself. <laughs> it's really nice. But one of the things that I like to do to treat myself after I finish food shopping is I go walk around Michael's just to get inspiration. It's the closest craft store to me. And I'll usually take the 40% coupon and buy a skein of, of Patton's Croy sack yarn. Um, and that's just my, that's just my little treat to myself. I don't do it every week, but I do it, I've, I've done it some weeks. And I haven't always bought and purchased a, a skein of sack yarn. Sometimes I'll just walk around and look. But, um, I have purchased, um, I think maybe, I purchased enough for my mom and I both to have a pair of socks. And since it takes two balls, um, you know, that was four weeks that I gathered them over. So anyways, two balls per sock, uh, per pair of sock. Finish my sentences. So anyway, so my mom and I will both have matching socks out of that, which will be fun. Um, the other finished um, item was I made a mini bunny love by Susan B. Anderson. And I made this just one for Arthur for his Easter basket. And it is so cute. But I'm laughing because um, I watched Molly of Home's Fun House. And I love her podcast, by the way. If you um, get a chance, hop on over there and watch her podcast because it's a lot of fun. But um, she made one for her little daughter, and she said, don't worry, the ears, you know, the ears stand up. She, she thought, oh, maybe we have to put something in them to make them stand up. And um, so I thought, okay, this is, I don't have to worry about it. Well, I used alpaca, not um, merino sock yarn. I used alpaca sock yarn. And they flop. <laughs> The ears are fluffy ears, um, which I just think is hysterical. So Arthur has a floppy eared bunny for his Easter basket. So if you don't want that ears to flop, use uh, a wool. And if you want the ears to flop, use an alpaca. <laughs> but anyways, we'll see how Arthur likes uh, Mr. Bunny here, and he has a big bushy tail. The tail is alpaca and oh, it's so soft. So anyways, they, this is a fun, cute pattern. And you know, I hate knitting toys. I just do. They're so fiddly, but Susan did a very good job with this pattern. Um, it's knit from the bottom up and it's pretty much knit seamlessly. So it is, it is, the best non-fiddly pattern um, if a toy can be not fiddly. Um, so she did a very good job on this. So, Mini Bunny Love by Susan B. Anderson. If you haven't made this for your little one for Easter, you have to make one. They're so cute. So, that's it for finished objects. Um, I haven't had a ton of knitting time. The boys have been sick, and a lot of my time has been taken up to, to um, for that. So, but there's lots of things in progress. So, here is um, my mom's beads, and I thought I was getting tired of not wearing any jewelry because I haven't been wearing jewelry because Arthur just pulls it. He even pulls my earrings. <laughs> He thinks they're his toys. Um, so I remembered, oh yeah, remember the mom's beads that you made? Um, and I couldn't find the pairs that I had made. So um, I pulled my pattern back out and I've been working on some mom beads. Then I got the idea, wouldn't it be fun to do it in that croy sock yarn? That, wouldn't it be so, I mean, look at this. Needle on the run. Wouldn't that be fun if you had all these different beads made out of these different colors? So I want to try some mom's beads after I get done with these um, and some self-striping sock yarn. I thought that would be fun. And I thought that um, 
for till the end of April, I would offer um, a coupon code for the mom's beads so that she can get them. I think I think um, for a dollar fifty. I think they're three dollars, and uh, the coupon code would be fifty percent off, so you can get the pattern for a dollar fifty. So um, the coupon code for that will be spring fourteen, and all lowercase. So we'll do that. That'll be fun. Um, the other thing that I've been working on. I've been in a polka dot mood. Yes, I want some polka dots to wear. So what better way to wear it than a cowl? So I'm working on this polka dot cowl and it's got stripes on the inside. So, and then a lace edging around the bottom. You know me and lace, I have to add it. I have to add it everywhere. So we'll see if that comes out and if I like it. Then the other, the last thing that's on the needles is a sweater. I love knitting with yellow in the springtime, so I had to cast on something that's yellow. And it's just a simple top-down yellow cardigan, and I'm doing the um, the old shale pattern around the neck, the lace pattern, will just be around down the fronts and around the neck. So, and I think it will be um, a three quarters length sweater. So that yarn has been so many different sweaters. It's, it's a beautiful Donegal tweed. And I knit it up into one sweater and I didn't like it. And I knit it up into a vest and I didn't like it. So ripped both of them both of them back and started knitting again. So I know I knit out. I rip out a lot and re-knit things. But anyways, um, in the spinning, I have been having so much fun. I told you about making row lags with a dowel. Oh my goodness. It is so easy and so much fun. If you have never done this, you have to try. Um, so I made a bunch of roll legs one Saturday and then I started spinning. And this is the result. It is beautifully tethered texture. It has oranges and pinks and whites and oh, it's just, it, it came out really well. I made a two-ply and it's about a sport weight and I didn't count up the yards. Sorry guys. Um, but it is just so much fun. So I ordered some more um, fiber and I'm going to be making some more bow legs and playing around with that and I'd eventually like to get some silk hankies to put into the roll legs. So um, we'll see how that goes and if I indeed do 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 that um, but I think that would be a lot of fun to try making adding a little bit of silk into these red legs so if you haven't tried it get a big a dowel or a big um, knitting needle straight and watch the video and try making some roll legs it's so much fun so um, that is um, that is all that I finished in the spinning um, area. I have the Sheep Street bat on my wheel right now, and it's that beautiful um, uh, lilac and green bat. So we'll have to see how that comes out. That's 100% Shetland, so that's that. It's been fun to spin. Um, there was one more thing I was going to show you. Um, everyone has been, well, a lot of people have been making the Cozy Memories blanket, which is so fun. Um, but I, I have tended to um, use my sack yarn to make these um, chevron um, pram blankets. And they're just the size of a pram, and they're lightweight, and they make a beautiful gift for babies. So if you have sock yarn and um, that little leftovers, and but you don't want to make a cozy memories blanket, this is just another idea um, that you can do. And I'll link that pattern below um, that you can do with your sock yarn. But 
a cozy memories blanket is terribly cute. So um, just if you needed another idea. Um, I did want to mention, you should head over to Kimber Lally's um, blog, The Giving Flower, and she did a podcast on a wool festival in Leipzig, Germany. She lives in Germany, and she and her friends went to um, Leipzig to a uh, wool fest. And she takes you around and shows you um, just the wool scene in Germany. So it's a lot of fun to watch. It's, it's, um, she's walking around, so you might get a little seasick. <laughs> But it's not that bad, and it's worth watching all the colors and the yarn, and um, it's just it's just a ton of fun. So um, you should head on over there. I'll provide the link below, and and watch it. It's fun. So I think that's it for right now. Do hop on over to the Ravelry group and um, share your thoughts about what you're knitting and what you do with your leftover sock yarn and what kind of sock heel you like and um, you can also find me on Facebook under Classic Cable Knits, and you can join the conversation there. But anyways, until next time, happy knitting.